How's it going? So today, we're gonna be taking my 3D metal printer. If you haven't seen it, check it out here. And we're gonna paint that thing. Wow, there's a myriad of problems on this thing, so let's go take a look at it and I'll give you the tour. Problem one, my fixture plate is warping. Problem two, I'm holding tension on the wire feed with a little C-clamp. Problem three, this thing is wobbly, man. Problem four. Oh, yeah, it, well the Z-axis was too heavy. I, I guess it's fine now. Problem four. Point four point five? I'm getting cataracts from this thing. So we gotta make an enclosure for it. Now among those things, we also need to figure out a proper way to cool down the beads so that we can get consistent layer heights and all sorts of other stuff. It's gonna be an adventure. Hop in for the ride, y'all. I've gone ahead and shortened this guy up just by taking it apart, taking the inside piece, cutting it shorter, and cutting some new threads on the lathe. Now, we gotta address the gantry. These little rubber wheels melt when they get too hot, obviously. So, we're gonna remake it to use these metal bearings. And while we're doing that, we'll add a little extra room for the head. So I got these parts. This is the gantry. We've got enough space on there to actually put the head on. These two little tabs will be bent over to hold the timing belt. And these little standoffs, two of them stick in here and have a threaded hole to where we can fasten a bearing on there. This third one has threads on both sides. So we fasten a bearing on one side and we can use this slot to adjust it up and down. Put it together. Looks pretty good, man. So here's how warped the old bed got from our previous tests. My solution, a thicker bed. Now, this is not gonna completely get rid of the warpage, but to make a new bed and to replace this bed is super easy. And that is not our biggest limiting factor on this machine. So for now, this is how it's gonna work. Now a few more things that need to happen. Shielding for the stepper motors. Got this one, just a piece of bent sheet metal. And this one, a slightly more bent piece of sheet metal. I've come in and cut the monstrosity of a wire feed off of the Z-axis as it was kind of too heavy and I'd like to use bigger rolls. And I'm gonna mount that on the outside of the enclosure. What enclosure, you say? This enclosure. Now, I didn't film building this. There's only so many enclosure builds that I can post on YouTube, guys. I think you can imagine how it was built. It's mostly bent 16 gauge. As you can see here, I bent this side the wrong way, so I had to weld it, of course. In the front door, I put some Shade 5 plexiglass. These are just from face shields for oxyacetylene cutting. The whole front door lifts like so. Inside here, we've got holes for fans, holes for wires to pass through. The whole back end can also be removed. And then this will sit on top of this, which will house all the electronics separate from the rest of the printer. I know 12 gauge is overkill. I ran out of 16 gauge. So this was an expensive base. Cross your fingers, the printer actually fits. Of course it does, I'm not that dumb, guys. Now I know Shade 5 isn't properly rated for arc welding, but it's the best I could find in a size like this, and at least it'll help alleviate my cataracts a little bit. Now as far as upgrading the hardware portion of this, the last thing we gotta look at is the wire feed. And this little thing doesn't work great. I think I'm still gonna stick with it for now, but I wanna mount it on here on the outside of the case to where this is poking into the electronics enclosure as opposed to this enclosure. That way this little motor doesn't keep getting filled with tiny little metal chips. Beautiful. All right, for the sake of um, laziness, I'm just gonna stick the old spool holder right here. Now obviously that's really ugly. We gotta, we gotta hide that. Problem solved. To get the wire to the head, I've got a new piece of liner. We can just clamp in there. Bam, job done. 
This thing's a dang monstrosity. But I think that's about it for the hardware upgrades for now. Now I want to start working on the software upgrades and I'm not going to be going into the firmware and editing anything because it's just a nightmare to pick through somebody else's code. Especially somebody else who is far more proficient at it than me. So I'm going to use an Arduino. The main issue I want to tackle first is the bead height problem and I want to do that by having a variable wire feed rate. There I am at work. Building this ridiculous fence. Anyways, I was thinking about the project. Let me turn the generator off. You like my redneck setup? Excuse the phone camera. I was thinking about the prospect of measuring current with an Arduino and using that measurement to control the wire feed, thinking that there would be more of a current draw or less of a current draw as everything starts to heat up. But as you can see, I was testing that with these scabby looking things here just watching the amp meter on the machine and I didn't really see a relationship. Now this is a welder on a pretty cheapo generator. I mean it's name brand but you know name brand doesn't mean good. But let me show you. Just gonna be piling weld right here hiding my face behind this bar. <laughs> seems to fluctuate quite a bit. Well, I don't know if we can actually use that. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. So, now I want to do a test using a thermocouple and an Arduino and see if we totally fry this thing by holding it right next to the tip of a welder. So here's my setup. I've got a thermocouple very professionally attached to the welding torch and that is hooked up to an Arduino Uno which is on my laptop which this laptop's slow. It's been booting the Arduino IDE for the last five minutes. So once that's booted up, we'll pull up a graph on here and try and plot the temperature. So as you can see, this is just the steady state. Normally I wouldn't call a wobbly line a steady state, but it is what it is. So it's flopping between 70 degrees and 68 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, yeah, hopefully the range of this graph widens up when we start welding. Let's give it a whack. It looks like it went down. Uh-oh. All right, we're just going to try this on the straight up serial monitor. So it seems like it flatlines at 32 almost the second we start welding. Well, that's not good news. So it seems we'll be unable to control the wire feed in correlation with the heat or the current on the welder, at least with the equipment I have. But I was thinking the plate probably heats up in a similar fashion every time in some sort of an exponential curve. So what I'm going to try and do, I'll take a couple measurements of welding and try and figure out that curve. And then we can use that curve to create a function to control how the wire feed ramps up. And assuming we can get the piece down to the same temperature between each layer, that should work just fine. Now this is the best thermometer I have, just a little infrared one. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna aim it at a plate, weld in that spot, record it, and then graph the data as a function of time. And I'll do that aiming at the weld pool and also aiming at the back of a plate that I'm welding on and see if there's any correlation there. All right, I've zip tied the trigger on. This is front of plate, here goes nothing. So now we just gotta graph the data from this test and then consult with our resident math expert to make a function for it. What do you have to say about your function? Shut up, it's trash. It's trash, you didn't give me enough time, you rushed me. I was wrong, I was disrespected. <laughs> now we just have to take that function and whack it into the code. And you may be thinking, why is this controlling a servo? So my initial plan to control the wire feed was to use a digital potentiometer with an Arduino to give it that slope. Well, it came in the mail today, and it's this dinky little thing. Suspect. I did some research, and this is only rated for 5 volts. The wire feed needs 20. So, in true Cranktown fashion, we're gonna do something a little janky. So I've gone ahead and printed these parts. This part holds a servo motor, like so. This part 
will get pressed onto the servo like so. Now this whole piece can mount on the welder using this existing screw to hold it in place. Now this piece mounts onto the knob, just a press fit. And then our little lever arm attaches the two. So now when the servo moves, it can also control the wire feed knob. Although I'm seeing an issue with it, which is that. <laughs> so that little lever arm wasn't gonna work, but now we got a pulley to control the knob just using a big O-ring. So that's gonna work a whole lot better. Got my electronics put together. So we've got a 24 volt, a 12 volt, and a five volt power supply. These are definitely overkill. This is what I had. The 24 volt is to power the original Ender 3 printer, the board of which is right here. All that is the same. We have our relay still being controlled by the fan output on this board, so it can be flipped on and off with an M106. Now it is a five pin relay. So one state on the five pin tells the Arduino to turn the case fans on in the enclosure to cool everything off. The other state is for the trigger on the welder and tells the Arduino to ramp the feed rate up. So it's still pretty simple. I'm gonna put this thing together. Let's give it its maiden voyage. It's all put together. I'm terrified. Oh. Better close this. A great shot, huh? Better hope the machine's not crashing. We're having issues. Look at that, that looks kind of funny. What happened there? Bad ground? Look at that, it didn't even weld. What does that mean? I mean, on the bright side, it means we can try again with the same G code. Hard to tell here. I think I've buttoned down the settings more or less. Our fixture plate, weirdly enough, doesn't seem to be warping, which is awesome. I think we're gonna do a whole lot better with a bigger print. So, I'm going for it. clearly got some issues with this thing. It caught on fire. <laughs> I don't know if you actually saw it catching on fire because I was taking a time lapse with this camera. L luckily I was close by. <laughs> Since then I went through and solved a couple problems. I got a proper wire feed for it. Now this is just a cheapie off of Amazon but this is actually made for a MIG welder as opposed to the spool gun one so it should be able to push a wire through that longer run a lot easier. Should. Thing two, I've replaced the servo with a stepper motor and this is better than the servo and the digital potentiometer because there's no limit to how far we can turn this knob. I mean, besides the actual limits of the machine. But then that way we can find the perfect wire feed rates to keep this thing consistent and have it be repeatable every time. Thirdly, I've welded some square tube in the back corner of this thing, filled it up with this MIG welding goop one of the main problems I was having was too much spatter getting caked on the gun here and it would jam up. So now, in between each layer, the machine will do this. Eh? That'll do, right? And although it may be the smart thing to do to do some test prints and figure out all the settings, I think I'm pretty close with where I'm at and I'm running out of 10 gauge. So, we're going for the full print again.
notice the limit switch up here getting moved up, my print failed with like seven layers left. I ain't taking that. So I re-sliced it from this point up and got rid of the dipping function. So hopefully it doesn't need that for these last couple layers, but I ain't about to waste a seven hour print because of one little oopsie. All right, I'm calling it. What a frickin' mess. Clearly not perfect. Considering this was done on an Ender 3, I'm pretty stoked about it. Now it got much jankier here at the top. And you can see down here, there's some bottom layers. Those look nice. And there's the top. I don't know what happened. This is much better than the blob that we printed before, huh? I'm stoked. Clearly lots of defects. You can kind of see where I had to do an emergency restart. But also, you can kind of see the door. Pretty freaking cool, man. <laughs> can you believe it? Now, obviously we're not going to be making any nice parts with this. But I already said, this is for art, man. Now, this is very high effort art. It took like seven hours to print that thing and, you know, I, I don't really want to leave it unattended seeing as it caught on fire. But I'm pretty freaking happy with the results, man. I mean, she's got her flaws, but it's beautiful. No, I didn't really end up using the enclosure because the shots look bad. Gotta get that shot, man. So, I hope you enjoyed watching me make the most high effort paperweight ever. <laughs> if you like what you saw, leave a dinger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.